Let's go. <laughs> I like it though. I like <sighs> it. You know what? I do too. I, I like that we're becoming more comfortable with this. You yeah. know, so <laughs> I, I I love it. Um, community coalition show, y'all. I mean, I wish y'all could have saw what just happened, <laughs> but sorry. Um, so K Wilson, David 2K, Yindi in the house. We here. What's good, gang um, gang? Recording on another Monday. It's a Monday when we do this, y'all. So it's Monday night. Mm-hmm. The madness is going on. We eating. I got snacks. I got snacks. I have a whole ear right. infection right now. I can't even hear out my left ear right now. It is it's it's it sounds crazy. Mm. But I'm trying not to talk too loud. Cause you know how sometimes when you can't hear, you end up talking louder. Yeah. To try to compensate. So I'm not trying right. to like project too much. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I can't hear for nothing right now. Um, Sheesh. Yeah, got like antibiotic drops. It's it's just weird. Like mm-hmm. a couple a days. Bit, um Yeah, it sucks. So like um, sitting in urgent care for several hours. Mm. Back and forth trying to get this medication. Apparently, no one has the eardrops. Like, I don't know why it's like everybody like they were like sold out back order everywhere. So I guess I don't know. Everybody getting ear infection these days. I don't know. Why didn't um, you you should have like you should have went to like uh right right it or like the prescription. Well, really? Yeah, you need it, yeah. Is it that serious? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So like I had to get mm. prescription eardrops. So you like drop them in twice a day for a drop. Like it's yeah. Cause you got to kill the bacteria in there. I don't know how I got it. I don't know what happened, but mm-hmm. yeah. So it was like, it was hurting. It was painful. You know what? It actually happens often to people that like wear headphones a lot. I've heard and that. like I've, I've And heard like that. earbuds and like, I, I active, like I, now I actively like clean all of my earbuds oh, yeah. and I, and I like wipe my headphones soon because I just, just because, like, I know that it happens often. Yeah. So, I think it's just something was, that you got to do. I think it was random. I got the whole little cleaning kit for the hair. Pot. I got that whole little thing. I think it's just something that just happens, you know? Mm-hmm. So, it was one of the just got to deal with. So, I deal with it. Hopefully, a couple of days, it'll be good. Yeah, um, here we go. But we here, though. So, oh, man. This was a week, y'all. Um, There were so many different conversations that needed to be had. But, again, I don't want to be the current event. <laughs> show you know what i'm saying right um but there was this there was a I whole think. conversation um that i really wanted to get to i know by now everyone has you know let's start with you know everyone beyonce's album drop we all know that right mm-hmm. After the album drop, did you like it um i don't think it's bad actually i actually listened to it on the on the drive with the fam mm-hmm. um Ooh, yeah. how do the how do the girls like it? I mean, we had to play the clean version, but um, I mean, Lexi's a big Beyonce fan, so. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I think you know you've seen her live, right? Me, no. Oh, okay. No, I'm not paying a mortgage for that. I'm good. <laughs> but I feel that. But I mean, I I it's a good album. I know people going back and forth with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, it's. Beyonce, it's gonna be good. Right. You know, it's good music, and you it, like the more we hear it, it's gonna grow more and more. But mm-hmm. I really I, like that she went the playlist route. Yeah, but outside of that, because I don't want to have the music conversations. This is more of a conversation about business. Mm-hmm. Um, and the problem here is after the album drop, you know, Khalees, we all know who Khalees is. We probably My heard the shaping, brand. Um, yeah, but she, um, that's Khalees. Yeah, if whole, he didn't know. Rant. I mean, we probably heard it. I mean, if you social media, I guess she got upset. Mm-hmm. Went to social media and she was talking about a couple things. One, I guess she was just upset because um, I guess she felt like Beyonce should have called her and acknowledged like because they used a sample, they used her song with a sample in the album, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess she felt in some way wronged by that, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. So um what it comes down to is that, you know, there's some business stuff happening here. Mm-hmm. She's upset. I, um, but so I guess Beyonce didn't have to call her. She doesn't own the rights to, she doesn't own the credit, the writing credits and all that stuff to the music that Beyonce sampled. Right. Long story short, she doesn't, so she's not going to get credit on Beyonce album, right? Or did Beyonce give her credit on the album? No. I, there was no credit, oh, right? Well, I think she did, but her beef is actually, it goes deeper. 
she has beef with Pharrell. That's the deal. Ooh, okay. Yes. I didn't know that. Uh, yes. They did her dirty with her contract. So she actually doesn't own the rights to any of her music, Ooh. even though she's the one who wrote the music. Yeah, yeah, that's what was said. That's what was said. Yeah. So, Oof. so she isn't listed as a writer comp- composer. Um, Pharrell, who's and then his partner Chad Hugo. You know they make the yep. two. Neptunes. Yeah. All she so I'm reading the article. All she can really do is vent. The way that Beyonce apparently yeah. used milk say is also important here. Beyonce apparently um, appeared to um, she used it portions of the written music. Mm-hmm. But not right outright sample it and sample right. it until you know, so like so you know you, I say kind of went just some, I mean, around okay. they like changed the tempo of the beat or something yeah. like that. Right. And if you uh you don't you won't get in trouble if you don't use like a full clip or like I think the rule is like seven seconds or is it thirty? I'm not sure. There's so many different rules when it comes to copywriting. It does. It there, to are. Music. there are. There are. You're a producer. <laughs> I am. That's that's so, why I'm saying I like. That's why I'm saying like it's either seven or it's thirty seconds. So, I you know not getting too deep into this part. This it's a lot to that part, mm-hmm. but I think there's a lot of lessons that need to be learned or taught. Mm-hmm. from situations like this when mm-hmm. it comes to us i think this goes beyond just the music industry stuff we talk about all the time right. on the other podcasts reading the rhyme right i don't want to have the reason the rhyme podcast but we've been here before david we've talked yeah about this. We've, nope. we've talked about this extendedly and there one part i want to get out of the way is that if you don't own your publishing or you don't own like your your writing credits or anything writing like credits that. masters stuff like that any portion of it you're you kind of got to sit down so all that being the said common thing that we see with a lot of people who get signed very young they don't read the contract they just absolutely not money like she was saying that she really didn't even get any money most of her money came from her tours, but nothing came from her album sales. But that's also a common thing that mm-hmm. a lot of artists used to say, like back in the early 2000s. They never made money from the album sales, only from the tour. Oh, to this day. They still, you know what I'm still saying that. To this day, um, it's still happening. And it's because people don't. So I want to say people don't like not everything in, the, in their contract is understood. No, we've been through this. That's why, like, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole. But, like, mm-hmm. let's just say this. The music business is nasty. Absolutely. The music business Cutthroat. is not designed for the, for the artists, artists to really yeah. benefit as they probably should. Right. Mm-hmm. Say that, right? The contracts, everything, the business, the way the structure is set up, it's not designed for them to really win. Right. You're damn near treated like an employee. Mm-hmm. you know so what, when i saw the rant and i hate to say it this way like and i'm not saying i agree with everything i'm not saying i but it's like then you just really ranting but the problem with ranting and this is what i saw is that now you're spewing information like it's like you you telling your mm-hmm. side but your side is really not right so people believe that stuff right also you know? i feel bad for her though because it's like I mean, she did write her music, but right. Yeah. But also, the first time Beyonce did that, though, she got in trouble several times for taking. But, her yeah, this isn't the first wait, time. Wait, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. This is where I want to go. Okay. Why is Beyonce in trouble? Mm. Why is Beyonce in trouble? She, what? I mean, it's always the artist who gets. Remember when? Remember when Pharrell and them did blur? Yeah, yeah, with, yeah, and they got in trouble with uh, Marvin Gaye. Yeah, but uh, and Robin Thicke got in trouble, even though he wasn't the producer. It was Pharrell, but he got in right. trouble. For it. But they they got in trouble right. for using a sample that hadn't been cleared or approved. Actually, it wasn't. That's a man. It was the it was for the cowbell. Yeah, but and but was it originally approved? It didn't. It shouldn't. 
it shouldn't have had to be because it wasn't in a it wasn't a sample it was it was, it was a song it there wasn't a, it wasn't sampled it was a song that was made uh that kind of mirrored Marvin Gaye's style I thought it was the beat too that they did yeah but but uh, so all that to say I think I think that case might have been a little the problem here she's talking more like Beyonce should have called her she could credit and all that stuff why mm-hmm. Well, she said, I think it's because they have bad blood with each other because this is, like she said, this is not the first time Beyonce has sampled her music. But like I was saying, uh, there, uh, Beyonce has sampled other people's music before without permission. But right. she don't need her permission. That's the issue. I mean, so it's like this, I guess. I kind of see where she's coming from. I know what you're saying because right. I said the same thing. Business standpoint, you can't really... Mm -hmm. get mad but i get where she's coming from is because it's like we are out here in this industry together Mm -hmm. you know me i know you right i think you're david i came up with this beat and you're like oh i'm gonna use her beat even though the person who helped me come up with the beat just took it off for themselves like because Mm -hmm. i know you i expect you to call me be like hey yo i'm about to use your beat is that cool I mean, I know he doesn't have to do it, but so, right. I get it. But okay, like, imagine give imagine me my flowers. Right. But okay, imagine imagine it this way. Imagine you're an artist, uh, you're signed to Kenny, and you signed a you signed a contract when you were young, and I'm about to put out a song. I sampled your song and I go straight to Kenny. I don't speak to you because I don't have to, because you do not own your masters. You do not own your publishing. I go straight to Kenny because that's what I, that's what I know to do. Because, well, there's like, there's a part of it that's like, and I hate to say it this way, but like, fuck your feelings. Yeah, but I mean, it's like, I don't know, because even with Aaliyah, when she did What's that song she did with Timberland? She did a lot of songs with Timberland. Are you that somebody? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. she used the DJ's daughter's little giggle that mm-hmm. she had. I mean, she ain't have to ask, but she asked. Right. Well, I think in this situation, there, there's what society and our culture deems as the moral thing to do. Mm-hmm. And then there's also the business thing to do. Right. I hate to break it to the world. Those two do not mix. Yeah. Those worlds don't mix. Yeah. If you want to truly do business, I'm sorry. Sometimes the moral thing don't work. So I didn't yeah. think about this from Beyonce point of view. Do we think Beyonce no or was what's her what's her last name now? She, she ain't take Jay. Whatever. No. Do you think she has time to be first of all? I had to actually talk to a friend who's an entertainment lawyer. I actually had this question. Oh, I actually have a friend how, that does that too. How what is the process of getting a sample cleared? Mm. you know there's a legal process you got to track that stuff yep. you got to find who it is and all this stuff yeah you have to find the original owner of the masters you know what I'm saying? and then from there and then from there you gotta that's the problem that she has so she samples people's music and she doesn't go everybody through everybody samples other people but right. she did go through her legal process but this one yeah at least it's not part mm-hmm. of that process right but for this one she mm-hmm. did but i'm saying in the past she's done it so you get sued. Right. So you get sued. So I talked to my wow. friend who who represents. So he said, you know how many times Kanye West gets sued in a year? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm she so said, sure. I, she said, I've been a part of several this year alone because mm-hmm. people come back on samples and stuff like that. Sometimes they don't know. Sometimes they just do it. You play the legal game. Right. So I say all this to say. It's like when, but I don't know. <laughs> you know, Kanye got sued for, you've heard uh, Ultralight Beam, right? Remember that prayer that uh, the little girl does? Bro got sued for that. But and sometimes you know this this situation she might know, but this is the game. Yeah. And like I said, at some point it may not be. It's a dirty game, right? It is. It doesn't have to be that way all the time. But I, I think about both sides of the fence. Yeah. Okay. You think a phone call is going to do it? First of all, how that phone call going to go? Hey yo. Uh. So. Uh. My, I'm about to I'm about to use your song. Uh, I'm about to put it on my album. You know, you know how that goes. Uh, 
So bye. So end the conversation, right? Well, I guess if it's like you're an artist, like you paint a picture, at least say acknowledge like at least acknowledge me for my work even though you didn't have to ask me but at least acknowledge like oh thank you Kellis for your beat you know what I'm saying like I, I am Beyonce I don't even like I don't even <laughs> like but I don't even like Kellis so let me just say that so if I thought she was if I thought she was wrong I'd be like yes I hate her because what she did denies that's irrelevant, but I'm just saying I understand where she's coming from. Like, at least give me some sort of like head Shout nod out. or something. Yeah, like right. look at look at Mariah. Okay, does she even own? Does Mariah own her? Yes. Because can nobody use a Mariah song without putting Mariah on? Look, look at Lotto because she didn't have to bring Mariah out, but she did. Right. Uh, I think if. Uh... Mariah Carey, I, I, I want to say she, that Lotto song. I know Mariah doesn't own that song because she sampled that song for somebody else. But at least Lotto brought her out. She's mm-hmm. not even on the song, but she brought her out and let her sing her little part. But then, her then we're singing. also then we're also assuming that these people are on good terms. That's well, I mean, point. I know they're not. So if I don't fuck with you, I'm, if I don't rock with you, why I'm definitely not gonna call you. <laughs> Mariah doesn't own her masters. But but that's what I'm saying. So like I think, but here I don't like the public perception that everything is gonna be hunky dory and I right. gotta call you. No, I don't. I I went through the process I was supposed to go through. The correct whoever process. Got paid, she whoever did. Was supposed to get paid, we paid whoever, we got the clearance from whoever. Mm-hmm. And you're not even my friend. So you friends, at, I would understand. I think it's just looking at it from a business standpoint. I'm looking at it as women in the industry. Right, but this happens to everybody. Together, right? No, we're but, not. but we're really not. Know, but but every artist always mm-hmm. pays homage to somebody. Like you know, just hey, Kayla, thank you. If the, I like you, know? you. No, but, Ooh, question: Have you heard uh, "My Type" by what's her name, uh, Saweetie? Yes. Did she pay homage to uh, Too Short? I, I don't know. Do people know that? Well, does the average fan? Well, probably, yeah. They probably know that, like, that song came from uh, Blow the Whistle. Blow the Whistle. Yeah, right. yeah. Blow the Whistle. And that's a, <laughs> see, that's a legendary song. And you know that's a legendary song. Yeah. I mean, so. I get it. She don't, she really doesn't. She did everything the right way. Yes, she did. She she had her team reach out to Pharrell and them and mm-hmm. whatever. I think that Kelly's beef is really not with Beyonce. I think her beef is no, really it's, with it's not. Pharrell and Chad with how they did her dirty. But yeah. she, I mean, that's really... She, she that's, learned that people in this industry is not your friend. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like, So this is where I was going like we sit up here and talk about loyalty and friendship and things like that, that mm-hmm. we expect everybody that be on the same moral code. Nah, this a business. The world is not on the same code. This a you know? business. But <laughs> but I'm taking, so now I'm going to take that music conversation we just had, mm-hmm. I'm going to translate it to the rest of life. Mm. You think your boss at your job is loyal to you. No, nah, well, we not at that. all. Not you, think, you think the service industries that you go to and you depend on, you think they're loyal to you? No, you're a customer. Absolutely not. Like you're a number. But but I, I think I think this is kind of different though than that because she's asking. It's like when Jocelyn just paid homage to Cardi B for being a stripper <laughs> and busting down doors for strippers to get into entertainment. Which is- you have to do that. It's like, you know, just. So let me ask y'all a question. Mm-hmm. Would you go out of the way you pay homage to somebody you don't like? Nah. Come on. Let's be real. Nah. Let's be real. Be honest. Somebody, yeah, you think about somebody you don't like right now. Would you go out of your way to shine light on that person? Absolutely not. And <laughs> not only that, if I, if I, like if I use their stuff, I'm definitely not crediting them. 
yeah, I'm gonna pay off whoever I need to, but I, I would I'm understand not going to pay off. I would I would understand if they were friends. That I might understand because that might be seen as some trail stuff between friends. Mm-hmm. But if there's already some tension there, we definitely ain't kumbaya and it up. Absolutely. Why do, you, not. why do you expect this person to go out of their way for you? Wait a minute now. Now let's go back. Nicki Minaj does not like Lil Kim, but uh, I think it's the no, other way around. Her. I thought she it was the did. other way around, honestly. No, Nicki Minaj hates Lil Kim. Are you kidding me? I, I thought it was Lil Kim hates. She hates Nicki her Minaj. too. They both hate each other, but. Okay. Even though she didn't like her, she still gave her her flowers. So I'm saying, I think I'm looking, I, I see it. I know what you're saying. But, but, then, but then my next thing is, in what avenue would you would, would Beyonce do that? Where would she do that? Where would Beyonce she have to do that? She above everybody. That's okay. Kind of, I, no, I think no, I know. No, where, where would she do that? How would she do that? She would. And I just thought about this. She in would. In yeah, I was about to say in a video. What if there's no video? There is a video. Oh, I didn't know. Girl, girl. See, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> whatever. Call me whatever. Beyonce always has a video. No, but I don't want to take away from the message because no, but- I get, I get it. It is business, and because- she definitely didn't have to ask her. But here's, here's the other issue too. There's legal ramifications if I do acknowledge you. Mm, what do you okay explain explain that please i'm gonna put you in the video i gotta pay you now mm. you don't have to put her in the video she could just be like Callous. you know like she but if, I say your, but if i say your name there's legal ramifications to that anything she anything she does pay. you gotta pay her with pink you at the but do you open up the door for you there there's actually legal ramifications to that yeah so that's why i for that so that's what I asked. How would that have been done? You can't put on the credits. You can't put on the album. You can't put it on that. Can't well, they could. They could say, "Oh wait, no." But that. I'm sorry. Just we going back to this was for what's that song? It's called Energy, right? The song that she sampled. Yeah, Luke, I think she, so. I don't think she has a video for that. But I was going to say, even though she doesn't have to put her in the video, but she could just put. Milkshake written by Kellis. I don't know if she put not, it there. not for real and Chad are gonna see you. That's what happened. That's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> exactly. why this gets nasty. This gets messy. Because if you go if you go around them, they're coming back to sue you. Right. And then they also, technically have the credit. Mm-hmm. And then I also the like the music industry is trash anyway. But absolutely. But here's where I'm going. You see where I'm going with this? You see all this BS we gotta go through now? Right. But that's what I'm saying. Now take it to real life. And this is what I'm saying. Like, I feel like as a people, we don't take the time to even scratch the surface on some of these legal issues. Right. You know, like there are so many NDAs that are signed. There are so many like but contracts even, that people have to sign that like let's 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 take it, let's take it on a micro level. Mm-hmm. How many people read the acceptance letter when you take a job? I do. Mm. How many people I, read the employee handbook when you take a job? Oh, I, I definitely I, do. I try to see if they're getting over on me. How many no, people I read? How many people read and understand their insurance benefits package when they get a job? Fully I, understand it. How many? I gotta people, read. I before I even accept the job, I need to see what you offering for benefits. How many people read the terms and conditions when they when they join the website? I yes. do. This is in a bank yes. and credit card. But how many people? Because then, how many <laughs> people do we think fully understand those things? Nobody. It's, does. it's not read. It's not written to be understood. There I Google go. search. <laughs> if I don't get it, I'm Google searching. But Here's... you're right because I can't even tell you how many times I got calls with people who didn't even know what benefit package they chose. Right. This like is... so, right. Like they purposely hire people to write to write contracts that. Benefit um, the company. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is this com- this music conversation is a microcosm of what happens in the real world every day with the rest of us. Every single day. And we sit up there and talk all this about them, but when you go back and read your own stuff, mm-hmm. it gets a little spooky. And I just feel like I don't think wow. that's a fault of the people. I really feel like we just have not been exposed to how we do that. 
you know, like we have to promote, we have to make a culture of being able to, to understand these things. Right. We need to like, I feel like the music industry is a little too far gone with it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it, would and, to, it would have to be blown up at this point. Right. Like, like we would have to like revamp but, everything because if we like, if we blow it up now, but like artists are coming back for every work culture is no different. Right. That's true. The employee and company employee employer relationship is really no different. Right. Well, I That's mean, who, who really has you? Uh, they usually tell you go find your employee hand, but they used to give it out back in the day, but now but, they don't. But that's what I'm saying. Now, now why? We're going to make it a little harder for you to go get it. We got to make it a little mm-hmm. harder for you to read. You know? Also, why would I give it to you? But that, that goes back. That's, that's what I'm saying. It goes back to nothing's in place for the employee to win. Right. You know, nothing's in that's place correct. for the artist to win. It's like it's the I'm whole a, concept of like I'm HR. A, like, right. I'm going to give you this money. Shut up. Do what I tell you. And 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 we control and we sign over your say so and your rights to a lot of different things. It's no different than go ahead and take a nine to five job somewhere. Go take a government job. You think what do you think happens over there too? Mm. Sign your acceptance letter, sign your wet and waiver and all that stuff. Right. You know. And if and, you don't sign it, you're not getting paid. No, you're not getting paid. But like you now, you're like, go ahead and try yeah. to take a day off. <laughs> try to take a day off, see what happens. We don't we don't want you to take a day off. Um like, it says in your contract that you can't do this, you can't be taking an hour lunch break. It's, you only got 30 minutes. <laughs> so it's like the whole systems are designed to for them to win to make as much money as possible for them to win. Mm-hmm. You know. I guess I'm going to get so long and use such big words because I remember when I took a class for business, they say a lot of people don't understand those big words that you use. And nobody's going to take the time to read that long ass book report. No, right. And they know that. Right. And then on top of that, you're going to use my lawyers that I, that are with my company so that, <laughs> so that we're even we're even more likely to win. The lawyers wrote the book on this. Right. right for yeah. arbitrator or something like that. Right. You know what? when they have that little, what was it called? Arbitrator? That was called? Yeah. Yeah. The arbitrator. The, um, yeah. All those mediators, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like You're using my people to fight. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tear you up. Yeah. <laughs> And we got the resources to fight. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing. Let it, a, a regular employee try to fight a corporation. You got one lawyer that you you can only, you can only afford so much. I'm gonna bleed you dry. They got the OJ team over there, <laughs> like ready to go. Right. They got resources. They can they can okay drag this out in court all day till you. I right. said bleed you dry till you can't afford your lawyer anymore. Right. We wrote the book on this stuff. Mm-hmm. We got this. Right. Oh yeah, go ahead and use your public defender. <laughs> yeah, or your lawyer that you can only, you got twenty five hundred, and once that twenty five hundred is done, you ain't got no more money. Right. These dudes on our payroll. Like it's I said, such... we got a dream team of lawyers over here. Exactly, and it's such a, it's so messed up, and it's such a cutthroat thing. But also, like, like I said, you get like for this to change, you got to blow the whole thing up now. The whole country might have to be blown up at this point. Honestly, like I hate right. to say it this way, but like like so it's too far it, gone it just it just made me like this whole conversation watching that video it just made it really made me think like everybody's getting screwed absolutely and so and and i i was saying that earlier really not to i wasn't trying to bash Khalees, but i i, I kind of feel for her. i do too she got she got she got jobbed mm-hmm. and it's like the only uh, she had to vent. That's the only way she knew how to get out, get mm-hmm. get back, right? You know. And I'm like, damn, everybody's getting it. Mm-hmm. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how much successful you, how successful you thought you were. Mm-hmm. Somebody got you. We right. look at we look at athletes in the same boat, right? You know, they come up with contract disputes. We was looking at was the Kyler Murray he had contract disputes. They put in his contract. He had to watch film and stuff like this. Like, oh, it, that was no, no, uh, wasn't that Zion? Zion got the weight stuff. 
He got yeah, absolutely, you know, and that was like, so messed up to me because I th- like that was really messed up because I'm first of all there were bigger people than uh than Zion in the NBA definitely, but but it's like I just I say all that to say like no ma- no matter how much money you make you probably still don't hold all the cards. Right. You don't hold the never. cards in your situation, you know, and you'll never hold all the cards because we're gonna make sure in your contract that we hold all the cards, we have all the leverage. And most people don't even know where to begin to look this stuff up to even fight it, to even contest it, you know, to even right. entertain right. the conversation, to take some classes. All right, you can take That's a business so law class. It's very important. Take a business class. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to mm-hmm. learn. Yeah. and there, Take there a financial are, literacy, literacy class. Well, there are resources out there because I even had to go through some too. Like there were some mm-hmm. seminars I did on like contract. Um, You know, there's like certain things. Just reading a contract. Going, going through a contract and can't speak. Mm-hmm. But nobody promotes this stuff. Nobody's telling people where to go. And no. It's sad. Even, Why even would successful I? Successful people. But even successful <laughs> people. Because again, everybody's eating off you, you know? Right. And this is another thing I'll um, say too. We, we, ooh, that's another conversation. They they do offer it. It's not for free. They want you but to spend big money for it. Right. But that's the thing. You you would think, let's say I'm an athlete, I'm making $200 million. Mm-hmm. I can drop a couple, I should be able to invest in myself and drop a couple of G's. But why would your lawyer tell you, you to thought. do that? <laughs> think about we think we think the lawyer's on your side. Your lawyer likes controversy. Right. Because that every tells time he me, I go to court, he got to get paid. Right, I get paid. <laughs> yeah, so that's why you think like we really think like everybody be for we just because you pay that person, you think that person for you. Right, like, like you go on the court, that's his game. <laughs> he's about you, to, he's he's about to drop a triple double on that. I used to, so I I'm not gonna say I'm not I can't I'm, I got to twist this a little bit. Mm-hmm. I used to work with some people who were lawyers. And the industry they were in, there was a running joke. And every time something happened, they would say, they're going to keep us in business. Oh, uh, so when you when you go out there and wild out, you think your lawyer upset? No, nah, I'm about to get paid. Every time you call them, cha-ching. What you need? Oh, man, that happened. That's crazy. Cha-ching. Right. Cut that check. Then, I, then we'll talk. Mm-hmm. Like... And not only that, and I'm gonna get paid after too. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like we're fighting all of this. So that's why, like, I really was like, dang, like that's hard. And then the people she trusted, she thought they was, you know, thought it was. She, we're talking about 14, 15 years old. She getting job as a teenager. I'm right. saying job because I really can't say what I want to say. As a right. teenager, mm-hmm. you know, that's hard. It is. And like I said, so that's what I'm saying, like. Beyonce did her role. She did kind of what she thought was right. And this is the only, like, people upset. Like, people really mad. And so, mm-hmm. like, I say that because we all in this together. Right. That's that's all I got on that. I just, you know, like, I just wish, I hope, find ways for us, even, I don't care how much money you make, I don't care what you do in life, find ways to educate yourself on anything you sign. Absolutely. Ask questions before you sign. Mm-hmm like you can also learn from just observing it's free lessons look yeah. I'm a, i watch the girl do my nails every time I go out here and do my own nails right yeah <laughs> yeah no for real real talk like you don't have to just go through the motions figure things out like i help people all the time with stuff i used to say this like i people used to pay me to google search People yeah. literally pay me. They would ask Man. me questions. And all I would do was Google it. The amount of times we've had that conversation. And I'm dead serious <laughs> about that. You pay, and I wasn't cheap. That Google search cost you a couple hundred dollars. You just do it yourself. Like, but that's you what can. I learned too. That's why everything you I can. do, I do myself. Like, but if you don't know that, I'm about to get some G's off of you doing a Google search. But that's the thing. So like. Because some people don't even, they don't even fathom, they can't even compute that they can do it themselves. That's like um, with dog groomers. They, they took a course, I think they paid like almost $1,000 for this course to teach people how to groom a dog with a round face. But like, you could buy a book. The book is cheaper 
to groom the dog with the round face. And to be honest with you, somebody can show you how to do a round face on the dog, but still, if your skill level is not there, it's not going to come out and you just wasted a $1,000 to is steal there it, a, your face. Is, is there a certification? No. It just teaches you how to perfect a round face on the dog because people are obsessed with a teddy bear face. But I mean, you really did literally have the book is $50 shows you how to do it. Like you just practice and they offer a free YouTube class on how to do it. That's how I learned. And that's the problem. No one knows you better. Than yeah. I had to pay $2,000 for the class. You think I'm going to pay an additional? No. Right. But also if you don't know that, you, you don't. You <laughs> right. Paying that, we mean to pay that bread. That's sad though. Right. Because now, now you got people preying on your lack of knowledge because they're gonna mm-hmm. get you because now they got they want you to buy their product or their little mm-hmm. course or whatever. Right. Like, Imagine someone meeting you and then you say you saying exactly what you said. Oh, I didn't take I didn't take the class. I just read the book and it only cost me fifty dollars. So I just I just learned in trial and error and I got good. Mm-hmm. But but that's why I also think too, like that's why there's so much power in connecting with like-minded people mm. connecting with people of experience you know that's the one thing you go i say like if you're going to network if you're going to link up with people link up with people that may know a little something something in this industry like i really like especially talking about entrepreneurship i really don't think you should really get into whatever your industry is until you probably linked up with somebody yeah it means you ain't got like spent mentor but like you can learn for a lot from some people and that's already doing it right like i'm learning a lot from kenny the thing is, though, about that, and I get people got to get their money, but stuff that you learn for free, it's like pay it forward. They charge you an arm and a leg. This is stuff that they learn for free. That's and they go to yeah. charge you like $4,000 when you could just do it on your own. That's what I did. Bump that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. I'm saying. I used to just hang around people. Right. Ask questions. Like I ain't got time taking yeah. your course. What's good? Yo, what's going on? How you doing? Right. I'm right. Like, I just during the pandemic, I'll never forget. I paid $150 for this girl to send me a book of merchants that I already knew. And then if you wanted her exclusive book, she wanted you to pay an additional hundred dollars. And I'm like, this is a scam. That's $250. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because she's trying to get paid. Right. But I see, like, I think about, especially in the pandemic, I think about so much, like, the amount of knowledge that I've learned since then, hanging out with you guys, hanging out with, like, my parents, just talking to people. Because, like, for the pandemic, like, I'm so grateful for interaction, because I've learned so much. Like, especially about music, and, like, the industry, and, like, how messed up it is, and, like, We've gotten to see like so many like horror stories, especially from the pandemic with the music industry. And you just learn to like something you just learn off the bat is to, first of all, read your contract and know who you are getting in bed with, because if you, if you do not, you will get screwed in the long run. And yeah. that is for any industry. I think you got to find ways to like figure for it out. Anything. Remember, yeah, because it's crazy. Free. They getting job. Remember that? Remember we read that Kanye contract. We did that. We did the whole. Yeah. Program. I tried to read that shit. That shit. Bro. <laughs> it's just like um, when they pass these bills, yes. and they put it out there for you to read it, but nobody yeah. wants to read it. Like when they were putting out the stimmies, and was yeah. nobody yeah. wanting to read where the stimmy money was coming from? Right. When you ain't did got no read- social security, don't cry. Did anybody <laughs> ever that. figure that out? Oh yeah, we figured what? it out now. Yeah. Where your stimmy money came from? Yep. I know they were talking about taking some out of social security. Yeah, remember we right. we went through that, and that was a that yeah. was a doozy. That was a doozy, and that's the problem. Like average person go read, they gonna look at that like, what the hell? What? Like the head's gonna be spinning. Mm-hmm. You can go, I mean, I don't know why people don't Google search what words mean. I do it all the time. I don't care. There's a right. lot of sites out here who break stuff like that down too. Mm. Also, but also like I value talking to people about it because they're able to like I want to speak to Kenny about contracts because he'll be able he's been doing this so long 
so that he can break it down to me in five minutes to where I would spend five hours reading a contract trying to understand what it says. Yeah. I like to read it first and try to understand it and then ask. I think this, however. Look what I learned. (laughs) I just just want people to start thinking that way and start trying. At least try. You Mm -hmm. know, if you need help, you can seek out help, but just start thinking that that way. Mm-hmm. Like when before you sign something, hey, what is this? What am I really looking over? I was watching a cartoon and it kind of did that. Like um they threw a contract in, in dude's face and he went to read, he's like, just sign it. He screamed at him. Dude was like, oh, okay, like you just signed it. Like, no, don't let them bully you. Right. That happened to me when I brought my first car. I went to a buy here, pay here. Mm. and they were so pissed that I had sat there and I read the contract and then I kept stopping and asking my mom what does this mean yeah. and then my mom would go back and reread it like oh that mm. means it yes. was so pissed they don't want you to do that they don't want you to do that right but that's like the I'm... thing like <laughs> fuck they feelings right they don't absolutely nobody bully you and force you to sign something that you're not ready to sign or you're not sure of. I don't care what it, cell phone contract. I don't care what it is. Right. Like, so, yeah. So, um, where we at, Tom? Okay, a couple more minutes. So, I think we got out the way. I just I had yeah, to yeah, get yeah. that point across. Um, so, I know we probably have some traditional Bobs and Karens. Yep. I had a long day. Oh, I, I, ooh, ooh. Please. Hey, I, I, I thought this was going left because you were like, I know we got traditional vibes and carrions. I had a long day, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I no. thought he was gonna say, I thought he was gonna say, so I need to tell y'all about this. <laughs> I do, I do have some. I do yes, have some. Please. I got some. I don't I don't know. We gotta come up with a name for the black bobs and Karens. I don't know. Cause these are <sighs> definitely it was definitely us today. Here's the here's the thing Beatrice about the Darren. Here's <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Beatrice and Darren. Beatrice. Here's the thing about the black, the black Bobs and Karens. The names that we could use, I know, are I'm racist trifling. as hell. That's why I, I said Beatrice and Darren. <laughs> but I'm sorry, but black Bobs and Karens sometimes are a little worse than white Bobs and Karens. You're absolutely and, right, and that's this is my point. Like, no, we just as cruddy, we just as bad. Mm-hmm. I don't like this stuff. Like, so this is this is all today. Middle of the day, go to get my car wash. I'll go to the car wash, you know. Um, and it's the car wash where you know they take it in, they pull it in, they vacuum everything, they wipe it down. You know, mm-hmm. people out there trying to do their jobs. One, right? It's a twenty dollar car wash. Let me Are make that poppies? point first, huh? Are they poppies? Yeah, they out there, they but they the they, they doing anything. Look, I ain't never had no problems over there. Mm-hmm. But when I pull up the car in front of me, black dude, like. I could just see, I couldn't even hear him at first. I had my music playing. I turned my music up. My man is popping off at Poppy because mm. Poppy, I guess, missed the spot on the wipe down before they even washed the car. So I'm, like, I'm listening to him, like, you know, you need to wipe. Like, it's in the back panel somewhere. He's pointing at the. First of all, fam, you paid $20 for a car wash. Right. You did not go to the dealership and get the full detail that cost several hundred dollars. Mm hmm. You pay twenty dollars for a car wash. You're gonna get a twenty dollar car wash. <laughs> and you yelling and screaming at my man because he didn't wipe down the back of your trunk like you thought he would. He missed a spot. Come on, fam. And he's holding up the line. So now I'm getting pissed. Fam, it's literally like one spot he's pointing at. My man then vacuumed your whole interior, wiped down the interior, did the windows, washed the car, and you really spazzing about this little spot on the back. Go mm-hmm. do it yourself then. Right. You holding up the line. I was pissed. Right. Now, like, no, why are you treating that man like that? Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? Like, if it's that serious, when you get home, take your goddamn rag and wipe it down yourself. Yeah. I don't like stuff like that. So I was already really annoyed. Not done though. Mm. My car goes through the car wash. I'm sick because you can walk through, you pay, and I'm sitting on the bench waiting for them to like wipe down the car, get my little mm-hmm. tire shine holder. So as I'm sitting there waiting for my car. I watch another girl do the same thing. Yo. Here come Beatrice. I ain't uh, you can tell I'm just whatever. I ain't gonna go through the whole image. I feel bad for I feel bad because I know 
I, I know a Beatrice and she's a sweetheart. So, she, <laughs> so again, the same situation. No, Cameron, wiping down. I do too. I know, yeah, yeah, I do. I got I got friends there. But, <laughs> but my old girl, not only is she yelling and screaming because I can hear it now because we outside. Mm. She snatches the rag from my man. Oh, no, 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 no. That's Don't put it. your hands on me. And proceeds right. to wipe down a little door jam inside her seat herself. She snatched a rag from home. Again, it's a twenty dollar car wash. What do you expect? Yeah, they're not gonna do. It's it's not a hand wash car wash, right? It's the one where you go through the brush. You go through the brush, but then, but like I said, once they come out the brush, <laughs> no. But once they come out the brush, they go inside. They vacuum. They wipe down. They do the tires. They do all that for they they do the windows. So like they over there working on your car. Your car be looking nice, but just because you miss one little spot, like spots are gonna get messed. Miss twenty dollars, fam, and they mm-hmm. trying to hurry because it's busy over here. You gonna snatch the rag from my man and do it yourself? Why don't you just go wash your own car? If they don't do it to the standard that you like it, go do it yourself. That's what we just talking about. Go do it yourself, then. Don't right. they got the shimmy shine out there? So yeah, but I'm like, you can you can go like, go wash your own car, right? Go wash your own car. If this that horrible and you popping on, I don't understand why y'all can't do this that. Why are you here then? Go do it yourself or go to the dealership and pay that buck 5200 for that full detail. Right. I used to work at a dealership when I was a kid. I know how much it costs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, off rip. Don't pull and up. They still miss the spot. Don't pull up a don't pull up at the $20 car wash with a Range Rover mad at them because they missed the spot. Don't be paying, don't be going to a $20 car wash expecting a 200 drop. Don't pull up. With champagne taste and beer money. Sheesh. That's what I was taught as a kid. Yo, I need that on a shirt. <laughs> like, y'all ain't never heard that before? That's what I was like. Uh, I got champagne taste and beer money. <laughs> but, but don't that's treat people too. like that. My thing is, don't treat right. That's, I that's got very money. Yeah, Casamigos <laughs> money with that, that nasty vodka, you know, like. Nah, I got PBR money. <laughs> <laughs> But I just, I just, I, that didn't sit right with me. I don't like how people get treated like that. I didn't think that was fair to them people out there working. Especially the poppies, because they didn't really be trying. And he was trying right. to be nice, but he was really trying to be understanding. You know, like he was asking where, and she, well, I just, do, and she snatched it, literally snatched it from him. I At that point, you need to go, me. ma'am. You don't, no, don't do that mm. to that man on his job. Don't do that to anybody. Please, don't. He didn't say anything vulgar. He didn't say nothing rude. He wasn't mean. He didn't deserve that. Mm-hmm. So that's the car wash. I'm not done. Mm. Mm. So then I had to get my podcast snacks, right? I go to 7 Eleven. So I'm in 7 Eleven. And I had to get my hey, gummies, is, you know? Is our, is, is our dude still there? I didn't go Have to that. One. I, okay. I haven't been over there in a while. Man. I go to the one further up. Matter of fact, okay. go okay. towards the church, right? Okay. You know that little guy? Oh, okay. I know. I know. Right there? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah, in that yeah. joint. All right. I'm in what line. I'm waiting. Dude in there. Um popping off. Popping off. So first he ordered he ordered some the 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 um the, the chicken wings in mm-hmm. 7-Eleven. Okay. I didn't I didn't know that either. <laughs> yes, they do. They do. They do. So, if you don't. And I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty good. I'm not there will be no 7-Eleven sla- food slander. I'm because gonna, I lived off that stuff I'm, for I'm a good, gonna, I'm no, gonna, I'm just no, I'm talking to I'm, I'm, ta- I'm talking to the people. There will be no 7 Eleven slander, uh, slander. but so he asked for some wings. Mm-hmm. So I guess you know, the dude is ringing people up, he ain't really here. Right. I need you to get the wings over here, man. So the dude's like, okay, let me get you some wings. So he get, you know, they got the pre packaged little wings, they got the right. little in the container. Only do there, only do there, yeah. Only do that by himself. So again, we wait. First out today. The lady in front, she's having issues with her car. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they he trying to handle everybody, right? right. She, she was on the phone. I guess she had to make a phone call to the credit card. It was, it was something messy over there. Mm-hmm. So while he's waiting, he tries to ring up the people in line. Mm-hmm. You know, he trying to multitask. Dude doing his right. job. Come on, fam. So then he, he proceeds to yell at the dude because he wants some barbecue sauce. Bro. You ain't got no barbecue sauce in here. So the nah, dude's like, man. no, we don't have any, like, what you mean you ain't got no barbecue? First of all, you're in 7-Eleven. 
You expecting barbecue sauce? Who expects barbecue sauce in 7 Eleven? They For- sell it in an aisle. I'm pretty yeah, sure they do. They Which, do. Go get you a bottle. Go buy it. So eventually, the dude looked and looked, and he pulled from under the guest a whole container of Sweet Baby Rays, mm. and was like, "I guess you can pour some." He's like, "I don't want to pour that shit. I want some." Bro. So then the dude was nah, like, well, "This is all I have." So I shouldn't have done this. Mm. What you but, mean? I started huffing and puffing. Which, and the guy? Yeah. So I'm like, mind Sometimes. you, I'm twice his size. Yeah. You know, I'm standing next to him. And there's three or four people after me. We got a line of people here. Mm-hmm. Don't nobody care about your barbecue sauce right now. Ain't nobody giving up. <laughs> so then he's like, all right, I'll just, I'll just eat these. So then he goes to bring them up and the dude is like, $7. <laughs> bro i got it my man goes wild seven dollars <laughs> for this what you mean like bro so he's like man i feel like i just i was asleep for 10 years everything gone up it has that's what i yeah. said that's what it has that's what inflation is bro so he kind of looked at me like i didn't look like come on fam come on either you're gonna buy these or you're not Right, like and then I don't, I don't, cause you don't know how people act right now. You don't know he gonna go to the train. You know, people are wild these days, right? But at some point, you're not just gonna sit here and keep going back and forth over those over those Seven Eleven chicken wings, right? Also, you can get a whole lot more for a whole lot less at Seven Eleven, especially you if you don't take your ass to Fridays and go order some food, like. <laughs> Seven dollars for some Fridays. But like, what, is, what you think is gonna happen here? You ordering food? You ordering wings? When has wings mm. ever been cheap? Right. What is and wings? I'm about, ever- to, I'm about to tell the manager at IHOP that they need him at that Seven Eleven because he'd be like, "You don't like it? Apply for a job." That's what, mm. that's what we need, though. Yo, you can get mini tacos. You can get eight mini tacos for two bucks. That's what I'm saying. Look, we go get them taquitos over there, man. Right. Two big bites. And, man, shut up. Right. Like. But I was just so just like just watch this this man taking it, yo. My man behind the register is just taking L's for no reason. He's trying to do the best he can. I just those are the things that don't sit well with me. Right. The people out here just trying to do their job. He wasn't disrespectful. He was just nice. He was trying as hard as he could. Mm-hmm. You know, he got lady dealing with card issue over here. He did right. But my man got go over there. He got to go through that for some chicken wings. Come on, man. Right. Also, and please take this as a rule of thumb. If someone is about to handle your food, yeah, do not mess with them. First because of all, <laughs> this it goes beyond the food. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I know it goes beyond the food, but also like I'm about to put this food into my body. I don't want anybody to tamper with it. I'll just wait about, twenty minutes. How about people being rude to nine one one dispatchers? Man, I'm pressed. They literally man, have man. to send somebody to save your <laughs> life, and you really copping an attitude with a nine one one dispatcher. I thought I never knew that people were really like that with them, but oh, yeah. people really being tired with nine one one dispatchers. Like, right? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm sending their that life is love. literally in their hands. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> like they won't send the B squad over there for you. Like, I can't do it because I'd be like, click. <laughs> Send the back, send the backup, backup EMTs over there. Yeah, keep playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like not the backup EMTs. <laughs> sounds like yeah, sounds the, like the replacement referees. Yeah, they send the, they send the other squad from down the, like the down the street. Like first that I mean, fa- I mean, as a person who's always worked in customer service, I never get how people could be so reckless to people. Like people are really rude, and they think it's cool. I've been pissed off at people. And I never get loud or jump up in their face or disrespect them at all. But these people out here just getting real wild. Yeah. And it'd be like people who control your finances, yeah. your dogs, like mm-hmm. people food. lack empathy. Yeah, people lack empathy. Yeah. And the sad thing is, these companies expect us to stay empathetic for them. But like you're not even being empathetic to me. Like hello. it's a two way street. Right. Yeah. That's why when you were saying that lady was on the phone with the card, I felt triggered. 
was like, I already know how that conversation was yeah, going. It was not. It was right. not going well. It was not going well. I probably Ooh. yeah could guess who she was calling to. She right. was in there. She was in there when I walked in, and she was still on that phone, standing there when I walked out. It was not right. going well. Also, you know, we really got to stop. We got to stop being on the phone while we're in line. Well, I, I don't think she could leave. Mm. I don't know. I, I wasn't trying to get in her business situation, but I don't think she can get gas. But Ooh. then it was an issue. Well, yeah. Sheesh. So like, I know yeah. that conversation very so like, well. <laughs> you know, again, feeling for her. So I'm like, we all being patient for that stuff. We like, I stood mm-hmm. in line. I was in, I was in line for almost 10 minutes at 7 Eleven. That's a long time. Mm-hmm. But when you see what yeah, people going through, I'm like, what you gonna do? What am I get mad, huff and puff? That's not gonna change anything in my situation. That's not gonna make anything go faster. Right. Yeah, I was blown. I had a choice to make. I could have put my food back and walked out. Right. You know, if I was in that much of a hurry, I've done that before. It was like, I can't, st- I can't physically stay in this. I gotta go. Mm-hmm. There's so many options there. So I just want to say that, like, treat people better, y'all. We gotta do right. better on this end. But, right. Because it's easy to accidentally drop your taquito on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Remember so that. I know. <laughs> so I know we're on time. Um, we gotta go. But yeah just just wanted to say those things y'all come on let, let's do better in this world um yeah. real quick y'all know we brought to you by the black squirrel media network y'all know what it is treat people better yeah. if you like people to treat people better come to black squirrel mm-hmm. um also we, cop the cop the black squirrel black men love nowhere. i don't even know what i did i did i did bro i got it on deck the, the black men love joint, pull that joint. <laughs> black so, men love 14 14 authors talking about love from different perspectives cop the book pull up to the um Pull up to the pop up that we're having soon. Details in the bio. Yep. What happened to the um, your black feminist stature? It's still, it's still going. It's still going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, we're gonna be vending. We're gonna be at the um, the book yeah, signing. We're, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a booth at the pop up mm-hmm. shop. So what you yep. say? Huh? I say you ain't throw it out there. Oh mm-hmm. no, we ain't got time tonight. I know we gotta go. So y'all know what it is. Yeah. Check out minnestature minnestature.org. Pull up. Pull up. Um. Dot com. And communitycoalitionshow.com. Check out all this show and all blackgirlmedia.org, the- right? Sure. Yeah. I thought <laughs> I don't know. At this point, it's it's 13 o'clock. Right. I'm struggling. Oh, um, no. hit the hit the bio. Hit the bio. Yeah. <laughs> hit it. We hear y'all. So till next week, y'all. We out. I'm gone. Peace. Peace. Don't do that. You oh. do me, y'all. I did. My bad. Hold on.